Welcome to Shmir Trick Artists, where you'll experience all the unpleasantness that comes with me, including parties, squeezing, reading, using, sneezing, sneaking, looking, twitching, itching, ticking, and drooling, and everything else, all the nastiness. If you can handle that, then welcome! If you can't handle that, then I understand. So, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, I'm putting on nail polish. I'm going to put on the top coat, see through. So I thought we would start with the news, huh? Shall we? Yeah? Okay, so the federal government is headed into shutdown. What does it mean? Who's hit, the, who's hit and what's next? It's so interesting because, okay, not to get into the whole Russell Brand thing, but the fact that the British government contacted Rumble and at requested them to take down, to demonetize Russell Brand, it is so overstepping the line. You know, like, what business does government have with the private um, businesses and private people and private organizations? You know, and it seems like the government like is has collaborated and is collaborating with with the press, which is really bad because what makes a country free? Free press. If there's no free press and, and if the press is controlled by the government, then there's no freedom of speech anymore, and there's no freedom of expression, and you basically become a slave to the government and whatever they say. Whatever they say goes. And that's what ha was happening in Russia. That's what happened in communist Russia. That's what happened in Venezuela. That's what's happening in China. There's no freedom of press. And why do we not hear about what's going on in all these other countries? You know, like Saudi Arabia. Why don't we hear news? Like, how come there's no crime channels, right? There's no true crime in Saudi Arabia. How come there's no like news outlets where you can see what's going on there, you know, what's really going on there. Why is there like a complete media blackout? I'll tell you why, because there's no freedom of press. They don't let you talk and say what's going on, share information. They don't let freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom to do anything. You basically have to follow the rules of the government, the people at the top. So... And you can see it's, you know, it's a tyranny because who's in Saudi Arabia? The prince. It's a family dynasty. There's no democracy. So, yeah, that's, I just thought to say that. Um, okay, let's see if anything is interesting, actually. This fall TV season, there's new, no new great anatomy, law and order. From an old style Afghan camera, a new light view of life under the Taliban emerges. Like, how do we know what's going on in these godforsaken countries, like in Afghanistan? How do we know? Because of the journalists that go there and report what they see, report the stories, take videos, document this stuff, you know what I'm saying? If not for them, or people that escaped these places, if not for them, or these people that escaped, we wouldn't know what's going on there. You know? And these people are would be slaves. Hello, Justin. How are you? They'd be slaves to the tyrants at the top forever. Very sad. Movie reviews. Silver Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. They're back. I really like Sylvester Stallone. I watched one of his movies, which was, um, what was it called? Avenging Angelo. I love his character. He's so sweet. Okay, let's see. World. World news. As the world's problems grow more challenging, the head of the United Nations gets bleaker. A month after Prigozhin's suspicious death, the Kremlin is silent on his plane crash and legacy. You see, I'm saying like, and when it came to the pandemic, right? Remember what happened? You couldn't say, and you still can't say, even today, anything. Your opinions on C O V I D. I'm alright. You couldn't say my video got banned 
because of misinformation, right? Because I, I put my opinions down, but like, why is it the government's place or YouTube's place to um, say what I can or can't say my opinions on what happened or what I think was happening with COVID, right? It was like complete power grab and control. Like, oh, they say, oh, misinformation is dangerous. Who's to decide what's dangerous? I feel like what's dangerous is when the government steps in and says, you can't say this because you're going to endanger other people's lives. Let us, we the people, decide what's dangerous for ourselves, not you, government. Because that's power grab. You don't, you're not supposed to, that's not a democracy. We the people should be able to decide what we're allowed to say, which doctors we want to follow, what we put into our body, that's freedom. Saying otherwise, it's basically, we have to just do what the government says, you know, and whether we like it or not, that's tyranny. And that was really sad, what happened. Even today, like, I put on YouTube, banned, I wrote banned video. <laughs> they banned this video, so I reposted it, I wrote, YouTube banned this video. And they banned it again and gave me a strike, you know? And I think it's not even about what I said in it, it's just the fact that I came out after and rebelled. So they wanted to teach me a lesson, give me a strike, ban me, slap me down, you know? Sad, because like anybody that comes from these countries, like Venezuela and Russia, Communist Russia, they understand what it means to, sh to be shut up and how bad that is. You know, um, India, Canada tensions shine light on complexity of the Sikh activism in diaspora. Netanyahu tells you that Israel is at the cusp of a historic agreement with Saudi Arabia. Cracks in Western Wall of support for Ukraine emerges at Eastern Europe and U.S. as U.S. head towards election. Israel strikes Gaza after Palestinians in besieged strip launch incendiary balloons towards Israel. They're not really besieged. Besieged. Judge oversees case to remove Trump from ballot, agrees to order banning threats and intimidation. Um, world politics video spotlight. And, like, People find it hard to believe that there are people out there that are very influential, that all they ever wanted was power, 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 power. What is power is control over, over other people. They enjoy their, they want to dominate the world and control other people in their personal lives as well. And it's sick, you know, it's sick. And these people at the top who are wealthy and have all this power, also government, people in the government, you know, they want all this power, and they have influence over the media, over like this AP News and CNN and all that. They collaborate with them. And they say, oh, we'll pay you this amount of money if you go with our narrative. And that's why you hear them all parroting all these um, news outlets. When it came to COVID, all these news, news outlets, they were parroting. They had the same exact words. Parroting the same words, the same narrative, you could play across the screen, like, every news outlet what they're saying and it's identical why is that is that normal it's like they're, they're it's like basically it's, it's like programmed they programmed all the media collaborated with each other and programmed it to try to program the narrative to program our minds to make us believe one thing and if we believe one thing then they have an agenda at the top you know it's a conspiracy no, I'm not gassy today. <laughs> um, okay, let's see what else there is. Politics, videos, spotlight. Politics. And that reminds me, you remember like Jacinda Arden? She was like, we have to target misinformation. Why do you care so much what information gets out there? Like, why can't the people decide for themselves and suffer the consequences, whatever choice they make? 
the people should be able to make decisions and decide what information is right for them and what's wrong for them. You know what I'm saying? Not the government. It's not their place. It's a power grab. That's all it is. And Jacinda, she was uh, Jacinda Arden. She was like a little tyrant trying to control everybody. And when she stepped down, I had a feeling that she was forced to by the powers that be above her. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so politics. Nikki Haley. Haley's approach to abortion is rooted in her earliest days in South Carolina politics. You see, the whole thing with abortion is that... See, the problem with abortion is that... It's become too extreme. Instead of it being a health issue for women, it became political. What is this? Instead of abortion being a health issue for women, you know, because, like, what if somebody has an ectopic pregnancy and so she needs to get an abortion or something, like, however they do it, or surgery or whatever, to remove the fetus that's growing on the outer whatever then you can get criminally prosecuted for you know getting rid of something that can potentially kill you you know what I'm saying so yeah the whole thing with abortion was taken completely out of hand I think what's her approach on abortion does Nikki Haley have kids Nikki Haley have kids does she have kids she has a kid Nikki Haley she has kids let's see children she has two kids so let's see as a state representative running a long shot campaign for South Carolina governor Nikki Haley would often explain her opposition to abortion with a story about a family I'm strongly pro-life very pro-life and not because my party tells me to be but my husband was adopted and so every day I know the blessings of having him there she said she won that race and was reelected as governor. She's now competing against Trump, the only woman seeking. She's not going to be president. <laughs> Haley is reviving the personal antidote where she, she would give in South Carolina almost verbatim. I am unapologetically pro life, not because the Republican Party tells me, but because my husband was adopted. Haley is gaining attention around abortion. It talks about her earliest days of politics. Challenging fellow Republicans to be, to be uh, pragmatic in their pursuit of a deeply conservative agenda. Okay, what's my opinion on abortion? Hi, Redbeard. Hi, Crazy Replays. I guess it's politics today. I don't know. I guess whatever comes up. You know what I'm saying? I think that... I think that abortion should only be allowed when it's threatening the mother's life. That's actually the Jewish stance on abortion. Like, if it's going to kill the mother or... Like, if a mother's life is threatened in some way, the child should be aborted. Because that's what the Torah says about it. You know, it says... Your life comes first. If someone comes to kill you, you have to kill them first. So if a baby is developing in the womb and the mother's life is going to be threatened, like she's going to die because of it, you gotta, you have to kill the baby. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like early on abortions, like one month maybe be okay for abortion because the baby is not really, it's not developed you know, but later on abortions, I think it's vile, grotesque, and and I also feel like babies are a blessing, 
having children is such a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a ma like magic, you know, and watching them grow, you know. I know it's a lot of hard work and money, but like, once you have that baby, it's it's probably a very beautiful thing, you know. <laughs> so, most of the time, like when people have their kid, if they're like normal in their head, they'll be really happy with the kid, even if it's hard. You know what I'm saying? It should be strict. Yeah, like, I feel like early on conception, like, early, like, when it's the first month, you know, also, like, in Judaism, a baby is not viable until after, like, a month, after 40 days, which is a month and a half. So, like, you know, I'm saying, like, it, it's not something that is able to, what, what does it mean? Like, it, it's just so small that it, it can, in one second it can be, you can lose the baby, you know what I'm saying? So it's not, like, considered... It's not considered, like, earlier life-threatening because I can't cope with. Yeah, like, it's, you know, it, it's, it's something that can just be taken apart, like, in one second. You know what I mean? It could just, it could dissolve even into the body, you know? So, I guess that's why it's allowed. But, like, later on abortion, I feel like it's vile. It's vile and it's grotesque and it's barbaric. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I've never... Like, I had a friend. She had an abortion. And she said it was just after the abortion was done. She just had a lot of bleeding. And, you know, but... but she, You know, like, that was her choice. I don't know how far she was in. But... Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if... Yeah, I don't know what I would do if I was in that situation. <laughs> You think it should be more strict, crazy? Yeah. So what's Haley's, um, Nikki Haley? What do you guys think of her? Like, leadership is about bringing out the best in people. That's what Nikki always done. Her approach will save more babies and support more moms and de demonizing the issue. Yeah, I think, like, these, instead of, like, you know what's so strange? I... Yeah, so I, I was, like, surfing the web, right? Surfing YouTube. Looking for, like, tarot readers just for fun. And I see this tarot reader, and she has... Her thing is that she is pro-abortion, and she says, oh, please donate here, and we're going to donate to Planned Parenthood. And I don't like Planned Parenthood from what I heard about it, you know what I'm saying? And then she's, like, as she goes on with her readings, I feel like her energy is, like, really bad like it's not coming from a good place you know what i'm saying so like the, even the cards that she pulled was looked like demonic and that's just the energy that i felt so i quickly went off of it and i didn't look you know like i felt like there's something evil like she's not connecting to a good source with her tarot reading you know what i mean because i feel like planned parenthood is also it's like they say like what is what is demonic right what is a demon? What is a demon, the essence of a demon? What does a demon do, right? If you let yourself get pregnant, you made that choice mostly. You need more responsibility. I have opinions. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I guess, you know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I guess, like, early on abortion, like, People could do that, but then a lot of the time they, they feel regret after, the women feel regret because, like, oh, I could have had a family even though the baby wouldn't have known who the father is, you know? I don't know. You should be able to get an abortion like a fry through meal. Like, there is, like, plan B, you know, which is to take over the, like, after you have sex, if you feel like you're going to get pregnant, you can take it, a pill to delay the egg from whatever and... So, like, there is things that people can do, you know, but, um, what was I saying? Yeah, what is, what is, what does a demon do? Why are they demonic? Why is the d demonic such a negative thing, right? Why a demon such a negative thing? The entity, it's because demons, what they, their characteristic and what they do is they cause decay. You know, they, they cause the breakdown and decay of everything, everything. 
and they make things break down and they make they just bring negative energy and, and sadness and grief and sorrow and depression and they, they cause decay. They cause things to just crumble, you know? So that's, I guess that's why I felt like that tarot reader was demonic. Like she's connecting to bad entities because it was just such dark energy from her. Like as soon as she said that, you know, Planned Parenthood, like she had an agenda and her agenda was connecting with decay. And decay is like getting rid of babies causing it to the death of something, you know. Yeah. The money counted the horrible and the sick. <laughs> yeah. So what's with Nikki Haley, right? Anti abortion legislation with Haley when she served in the state legislature and she's not going to mislead the public and make them think they're going to get something while Trump remains dominant in the primary, many Republican voters say they're open to new nominee. Excuse me. I don't think she'll get him because she's a woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know who's really pretty? You remember um, Sarah Palin? They don't really stand a chance, you know? Nationally, 6 in 10 Republican men. Excuse me. 61% of women, 63 say that abortion should be illegal in a majority of incidents. She warned Republicans not to be caught. Like, because, you know, it was interesting. I was watching. I used to stay with my sister's mother-in-law, who lived at the time in Muncie. And, and we were watching, like, this show. I don't remember what it was. We're watching this show that it it would show like in the old days in like the 1900s right like the 19 1915 1920s where you know there was no uh women would somehow get pregnant through whatever it is like how you know if they were promiscuous whatever or if they whatever happened to them they would get pregnant and then they would go to these underground clinics where they would get abortions, and a lot of them would die after the procedure. It was like a secret thing, you know? <laughs> they would get rid of the baby, but then they would, like, damage the woman down there, like, really bad. So a lot of those women, they would just die after. And it was like a whole thing until, like, abortions became legal somehow. I don't know. It's, like, a very strange thing. So, um, stop demonizing the issue. Whatever. <laughs> It doesn't really... This article told me nothing. Terribly written. Boring. Who's Menendez? I don't care for Menendez. Jailhouse letter adds wrinkle in the case of mom accused of killing husband. Then writing kid's book. What's with this lady? Do you think this lady is innocent? Corey Richens left. A Utah mom of three who authorized... Who authorities say fatally poisoned her husband. Eric Richens then wrote a children's book about grieving. So this mother, she basically is accused of killing her husband because basically her husband told other people before he died that he thought, you think she's guilty? <laughs> he thought that she's trying to poison him. So you shouldn't be able to get abortion like a drive, a drive through meal. My gut says guilty, yeah. And so, so she made a book. Can you imagine? She made a book about grief to help her kids get through it. But, but, the big but is that that's like so perverted. It's sick, right? If she, if she did that to her husband. Mexican president wants to meet with Biden in Washington on migration and drug tra trafficking. You see, the thing is, with Mexico trying to meet with Biden, they shouldn't meet with Biden because Biden is just a puppet at this point because he... If anyone disagrees with me on Biden, they're idiots because everyone knows that Biden is out of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Biden is out of it. 
he like wanders off, you know, and they've made a fool of America. It's a joke. Mm hmm. And it, it, it's elder abuse. It's funny, I remember arguing with this guy. I was at work, I was working in this place before the elections, right? And I was telling the guy, I was like, you know, Biden is a pedophile, and he is, he's out of it. And he was telling me, oh, he's not a pedophile, and I'm showing him, like, pictures of, videos of Biden, like, trying to pinch a little baby's, a little girl's nipples, you know? And he's like, you're just making up stories, you're assuming things, and he looks at the videos, like, it's nothing, you're just making it up. You know, and then it comes out that his own son is having sex with little girls in Ukraine. There was a video, and they took it down. The, the internet scratched it. He's senile, yeah. Okay, verdict is guilty. Sentence is the guillotine. <laughs> the guillotine, yeah. I'm telling you, you know, like, I feel like... Yeah, I guess the guillotine would be a bit... A bit much for Americans, you know? Like, people don't realize that America has the best justice system in the world, no matter what anyone says. Even though they go, they get things wrong sometimes, a lot of the time, they still have the best system. It's crap porn by Hunter. Hunter? He, he, there's a video I saw on Ukrainian television. The Russians showed him... Having little kids, sex slaves, touching him in his privates. Like he was getting his his thing, you know, done and disgusting. And they scratched it from the internet. I put it on my, my Twitter. I found it. I put it. And then all of a sudden, it's off the internet. You seen the video? Like, what's he doing with eight-year-old kids? Why... Why are they using kids like that, like, for sex? Like, what, is he sick? He can't, he can't use his hands for his own pleasure. Why does he need to damage children, you know? Do you disagree with what? Well, if you look at, go look at, like, um, what happens in Russia, for example. The Russian justice system, whatever they have, there's a guy who was, I saw, like, first of all, my father's from Russian, so he's from Ukraine, former USSR, so I know this. But if you go look at other, other countries' justice system, you will appreciate what America has, that there's actually a system where if something goes wrong, you can pursue justice, you know? In Russia, there's no such thing like that. Like, this guy in Russia, he he was a, 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 a guy, he was a, what do you call those people? PhD? That teach classes in the university? Not sure about kids, but he had a lot of ladies. No, you saw the wrong video then. I saw children. I can swear what I saw by what I saw. Okay? You saw the, you didn't see the video I saw. You saw something else, Red Beard. I saw he was with Ukrainian children who are sex slaves. I saw him lying there and having kids do, st do stuff to him. And they scratched it from the internet. You can't find it anywhere. Okay, there was no ladies. There were children. Babies. You know, and, and, and the fact that I saw it, and so many other people saw it, and nothing is being done, and it's scratched from the internet. Like, it's sick. But, okay, so I was talking about this guy who was in the university. What do you call those guys that are the professor? Professor in the university, Russian university. He would take advantage of young girls who were in the university. You know, abuse of power, right? And one girl loved him, and she decided to be with him. And she was young. He was like 60-something. She was like 20. And she, she lived with him. And she called her family and said she's unhappy. And then she, she said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then he basically, she wanted to go see her friends. He didn't let her go out. So she, he got drunk and he killed her. And then he 
her body was in the house. He hid it somewhere, and he had a party. And then he chopped her body up, threw it in the river. They they had videos of it. What did the what did the Russian justice system do? Because he had money and he was influential, they gave him twelve years in prison for murder. And they gave him twelve years. And what was his prison? Where was what? Where was he kept in prison? In a, a beautiful house with access to internet and television and lovely shower and fancy house with like a cook that he can have good food and everything. He was in like a high quality house for 12 years and that's it. You know, like that is a justice. Like in, in Russia for murder, you get 12 years. That's it. Maybe if you're not, if you don't have money, then because like Russia, it's all about bribery. You know what I mean? Like you bribe your way. You say, oh, um, I want this. I'll give you money. And it's all about bribery. How do I know this? Because my father's Russian. <laughs> it's about bribery. And my father said one time he tried to bribe a... He went to government office and he tried to, like, give a gift to one of the government people. And they they said, oh, you're trying to bribe me? Because in America, you can't bribe someone. That's That's a crime. And... But in his mind, my father's Russian, so of course you bribe somebody. You want to get what you want, you got to give them money, you got to give them gifts, you know? Like, that's the only way to get what you want. But regardless, it's all been memory hold. No justice here either if you can't get arrested for tweets. If you can. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like, that's the thing. The tyrant's at the top bad people you know what I'm saying like the fact that I can get kicked my video can get a strike for expressing my views on COVID you know like I said that I think it's cruel to let people die alone in a hospital you know what I mean it's like cruelty it's, it, 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 it's, it's barbaric you know they took it down and gave me a strike you know what I'm saying like what is this communist Russia yeah so but but I'm saying like in America still is like justice if somebody god forbid gets murdered then you know you can take them to court and there's due process and you know there's different uh, you know first degree murder second degree murder they get a certain sentence and they get put in jail and you can pursue justice you know in other countries you can't there's no such thing you know like Like, right, like, why do you think, like, in the Middle East, there's no, you don't hear, like, anything about true crime? Like, people do familicide, they do feminicide, they kill their wives, or whatever, for honor killings, and it's okay, you know? Censored, yeah, you get censored. Hugging grandkids through a plastic cape, I won't forget what they did. What does that mean? Hugging grandkids through a plastic cape. Oh yeah, hug, hugging the the grandchildren through a plastic thing. It's like it was just so ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, like listen, I get it. I get that people were afraid of COVID, but the government should never have stepped in and done any of these lockdowns. Like in Israel, I remember here, I was working during COVID lockdowns and and they, they did a lockdown and nobody could leave their houses and everybody had to get vaccinated I I resisted I got tested every week to check that I don't have COVID right and then after I wanted to visit my family so you can't fly without getting a shot so I did that and my ex pressured me to do it so but otherwise I, I resisted for two years I didn't get any nothing It's why there's no justice system. In in those other countries, there's like no justice system. I don't know people had no jab. <laughs> you know, I grew up with no jabs. Because my mother, my parents got, uh, for all of us kids, exemptions. They got for us religious exemptions. But now they made it illegal. You can't do that anymore. You can't get religious exemptions. If you want to send your kids to school... There's no way. And guess what? All these kids that have the jabs, they all have breathing problems. 
They need to sit there with nebulizers. You know, they can't breathe. They get pneumonia at such a young age. Like, I never had any of these problems when I was a kid. You know? I never had any of these problems. Like, all these younger kids, all of a sudden, they have, like, all these breathing issues. And it's not normal. You know, like, they get sick so easy. Like, at the, every every week they're sick. And every week they need antibiotics. And they have to get, like, a million vaccines. You know? It's like... And the parents don't have a choice. Because if you're going to send your kids to school... You have to give them the vaccine, you know? You mean with the COVID jab? Yeah, I can't say the word because if I say it, they'll just ban me. I'll get banned now altogether, I don't know. <sighs> For saying the word banned. Can you imagine? It's really sad. Like I have a I have a Rumble account, but I have to connect the Rumble thing to this OBS to be able to stream and I don't know who would follow me there anyway. Whatever is pathetic. Federal judge strikes California law banning gun magazines of more than 10 rounds. You see what I'm saying like why are they banning guns, gun magazines, for different guns? Like, why is it the government's business to ban this stuff? You know? California cannot ban gun owners from having detachable magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. A federal judge ruled, sun, ruled Friday. Okay, so this judge is good. Because, you know, in California, they're like, oh, ban this, ban that, ban everything. Just ban your face, you know? And it's like, <laughs> it's infuriating. And I'll be very clear with this. I believe, what's my thoughts on Russell Brand? I think that he did it. I think he's guilty of all those. My thing is that I think, you know, King David, right? King David, the great King David. Psalms of David, right? He wrote all the songs and the Christians read it and the Jewish people read it and I don't know who else reads it. The great King David, he was guilty of rape of Bathsheba. And not only that, he sent Bathsheba, he, he, he did adultery because she was married and he raped her and she had a kid from that, the kid died. But then he sent the husband to war on the front lines knowing that the husband will die. So he's guilty of murder and rape. So if the great King David can do such things, I don't... Okay, I say, okay, innocent until proven guilty, right? He should have... He should have the ability, Russell Brand, to prove his innocence or go to court or whatever. Innocent, and I don't think that YouTube should have demonetized him at all. I think it's wrong that they did that because innocent until proven guilty. But I'm not going to say I don't believe he did it because... If King David is capable of such a thing, he's capable too. And because of all his history and everything, like, he probably is guilty. But, you know, I do, I like how he talks about, like, Big Pharma and all that stuff and the government stuff and how he, how he, he speaks a lot of truth, you know what I mean? But there's no excuse for what he did. Like, I, I do believe he, he probably is a sex offender, you know what I mean? And sex offenders need to be put away or cut their thing off <clears throat> yeah what's your thoughts I think he smashed a lot of women but it's very suspicious <laughs> oh no that's a crazy case yeah thing is like no I I, I innocent to, to proven guilty you know if he, if he wants to prove his innocence he should take them to court it's so easy to destroy someone's reputation you know what I mean so like I feel like he should go to court sue them for defamation or like this thing needs to be settled somehow but if I'm going to say that I don't think that it's possible that he did these things, especially because of his because of his past and his books that were written and the women, the way he treated women, a lot of women like spoke about it. I don't believe that he's innocent completely. You know what I mean? Like they're probably he probably is a bit of a sex offender. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that he's not a smart guy and he doesn't He's not a smart guy, and he doesn't, and he's not speaking the truth. Like, I do believe he's speaking the truth, especially because 
the UK, when the government gets involved, you know, like, okay, he hit on something. He hit on something true, you know, and they're, they've, they're scared. They want to take him down. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he's an angel. You think he's an angel? You sure he's no angel? Why now? Because, yeah, it could be both. It could be that those women never came forward. And it's just being dug up now just to get him shut up. It could be that it's true. Those allegations against him are true. It could be, I think, that the allegations against him are true. But at the same time, it could be that they're only digging it up now because they want to take him down because of how he's talking. Because of his he's talking truth about the government and everything else and all his conspiracies, which are probably true, you know. So, like, two can exist at once. That's what I think. Two can can exist at once. Like, what do you think? You know what I mean? Like, more beer. <laughs> Cheers. I do think two can exist at once. You know what I mean? And I think that if he's guilty of said thing that those women are saying, I think... The, pro- the appropriate punishment would be for them to just cut off his dick and let him continue talking against the government. That would be the appropriate uh, punishment. Let him, I think, yeah. Like, I think that they should allow him to, if it's proven that he's done those things, like, they should cut off his dick, and if he ends up going to jail, okay. But... Like, that's my, my philosophy is that if King David could do it, he can too. You know what I mean? He's not greater than King David and, you know, even King David's son, Amnon, he, King David, like, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? So, King David's son, Amnon, he raped his half-sister, King David, from another wife. Her name was Tamar, the son. And then, Tamar's full brother avenged her honor by killing his half-brother Amnon. So, if these great people can do these abhorrent, terrible things, I think Russell is also capable. Especially since I've seen, like, what they say and, you know, with all the details and everything, like, again, I think it's wrong for you to demonetize him or ban him. I think the UK government, they're afraid of him. You know what I mean? He's obviously very, very smart. Like, I think Russell Brand is extremely intelligent and very smart, and they're scared of him because he's speaking the truth, right? But he was 30 when he did these things, you know? Like, 30 is is a man, you know what I mean? It's a grown man. Like, if you're doing these things at that age, I mean, like, yeah, like, go to jail, you know what I mean? Like, if, if he's proven guilty. It's not justice, court of opinion. Yeah, like, I think it's wrong for YouTube to demonetize him and all these other places to take him down. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. I I think that, you know, like, when it comes to some men, I feel like men are not angels. They do bad things. People do that. Man does bad things. Men do bad things, you know? And I could talk from personal experience. Man is capable of terrible things. And it doesn't mean that they don't have, like, people could have two sides. Like, they can be so kind, so nice, helpful, funny. And then they can have this dark side to them where it's like they have no respect or they can't control their urges and they just hurt people, hurt women or children or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, and that that's what makes things so horrible. That's what makes things so so hard to, to understand because how could two things exist at once, you know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If he was 30 years old and doing these things at 30 years old, there's no excuse. If he's guilty of what he did at 30, I mean, at 30 years old, you're not 
you're not a child. You know, you're not 15. And even 15, okay, it's bad, but 30? Running around, having sex with 16-year-olds? I mean, come on. While that might not be illegal in, in, in England, 30 years old doing these things, having sex with children, teenagers? I mean, come on. Nevada Republic brace for confusion. Let's see what else there is. Obamacare, false promises in Obamacare. Niger's junta accused the United Nations chief of blocking his participation. Pakistan prime minister says manipulation of coming elections, blah, blah, blah. The Biden administration turns to familiar tool. Already in the United States, Venezuelans. As the world's problem grow more challenging, I don't care for that. Let's see what's interesting. What's interesting, right? Uh, what's this? Stop genocide? Let's see, what is this? All these ugly guys, ugly old men in politics. Let's see what else there is. That's why I say, look, you know, if. Entertainment. If I say if if King David can do these terrible things to women and his son, and they're in the Bible, you know, like the the great King David. It just goes to show that men, men, regular men are no different. You know. Sabato de Sarno makes highly anticipated debut. Gucci. Um, King Charles III winds up his Franco state visit in Bordeaux to focus on the climate and sip wine. Everybody hates this guy, you know, the French guy. They all hate the, the French president. King Charles is a clown, nobody respects him. Hollywood actor and writer strikes have broad support among Americans. You know, it's so funny because, like, there are some people that their dream is to go make it in Hollywood. He's not your king. <laughs> okay, I'll go to somewhere else. I'll go to some, some other news. Yes, yeah, 16 is legal, but is it moral? The question is, just because something is legal it doesn't make it moral. You know what I mean? He was 30 freaking years old. 30! And the girl was 16. I mean, how could somebody in good, good conscience that's 30 years old go with the child? That's a child. Somebody is still in school. They don't have their power. They don't have their mind developed. They don't have an understanding of the world. They're still children. He was, like, yeah, 16, 17, 18 year olds having sex, whatever, fine. Even 20 with a 16-year-old, if it's legal, fine. But 30? I mean, like, give me a break. Like, that's a child. You don't have, you don't, you don't go with children. You don't go, the power is, 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 like, how could somebody with good conscience go and be with a, a child like that? Like, somebody so young and vulnerable and... You know what I mean? Like, I know for, for myself, like, even if a, a boy, it's a boy, right? 16 is a boy. It's not a, it's not a adult. Even if a boy would be like, oh, I'm so attracted to you. I like you. I like you. Yeah, you can bug me and bug me, bug me. I'd be like, no way. You're a child. Go find somebody your age. You know what I mean? It's it just, it's, 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 it's worse than, than. Anyone who's 30 that goes with a 16-year-old just because it's legal, and you know what he said? He said, I don't care if you're 12. I just want to make sure that I don't get into trouble. You know what I mean? Like, he's a schmuck. You know what I'm saying? He's a schmuck. He got problems. Um, let's go to... Let's go to... What's this? Yeah, oh yeah, I was talking about Hollywood, right? 
So the people are like, oh my God, yeah, I want to make it to Hollywood. I want to make it to Hollywood. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I was, you know what I was thinking to myself? I was thinking, I have zero desire or respect for anybody who's in Hollywood. I have zero desire, like, to meet anyone in Hollywood. I don't respect them. I don't, I wouldn't be starstruck because to me, Hollywood is nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that, that I would be like, oh my god, because to me, Hollywood is like, people that have problems and they have uh, they, they decided to be an actor they're all actors and they're you can't trust anything they say because they're just actors they could turn on their chairs in one second you know yeah not even Keanu Reeves like I have no desire at all to be in Hollywood to see Hollywood stars to I have zero desire like it's the strangest thing but who would I like to see? Who would I like to see if I had a chance to meet somebody? Who would I like to meet? Who would I like to meet? If I had a desire to meet a famous person, who would I like to meet? Einstein, maybe. Not Einstein. Who would I like to meet? Right, like, who would I respect? The Dorney Weaver. Kenu, I don't care for Kenu. Kenny Reeves. I don't care for sports. It's funny, like, I really, really don't care. I have a, my baby brother that came to Israel. He's in Israel now. My baby brother. Zush. Okay, I need the bathroom. I'll be right back. Who would I want to meet from history? You know, like. So, who would I, basically to me, anybody in authority position, I naturally, I, I naturally distrust. I don't trust people in authority position. The more authority someone has, the less I trust them and the less respect I have for them. It's a weird thing. I don't know why, but... So, I don't know why it is. The, the more authority and the more famous somebody is, the more authority, I have no respect for them. Like, I have no trust. Excuse me. Yeah, so there's some people that love to, they're like, oh my god, Hollywood stars! Like my little brother, he his dream is to like, take pictures of Hollywood stars and he actually does he takes he takes pictures of Hollywood stars like I'll show you <laughs> 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 
excuse me, he's here and in Israel, and he'll come visit me. Maybe I'll do a live with him, and I'll ask questions, and uh, sometime this week. But let's see. Zisha Golden Photography. Zisha Golden Photography. I'll show you who he takes pictures of, like, of Hollywood stars. Yeah. So, photo photography that takes, that tells a story. Okay, so, I don't know who these people are, but we know who this is. Right? He takes pictures of the, the Hollywood people. Like, this is his dream, you know? That's Monica from Friends, right? I don't know who this guy is. You know who this guy is. He's from the movies. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who the, he takes. He likes to take pictures of the random people in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? This is somebody, somebody famous. I don't know who she is. He he takes pictures of these people. <laughs> He tries to, like, get them to. <clears throat> so, he's very good at what he does. And, you know, he's, he looks really good. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> so, wait, wait, let's see. This is him. Let's see. Okay. He's very sweet. It's my baby brother. And... So, yeah, I'm very proud of him. Uh, wait, does he have, like, other... He's very sweet, you know? Let's see. View my full, por full port... View my full portfolio. As he has all these, I don't know who this lady is. I don't know who this lady is. I don't know. Yeah, he's very much a gentleman, and he's very sweet. I don't know who this is. Apparently, they're Hollywood. You know what I mean? I don't know. Let's see what he has in here. Am I on here? No, okay, let's see. Portfolio home. Let's see. Home. Yeah, whatever. I don't know how to work this website. About, uh, yeah, very nice. <laughs> He's such, such a sweetie, such a sweetie pie. Yeah, that's my baby brother. So he's very like he Hollywood. He loves Hollywood. He wants to take a picture of this person, and he has Hollywood friends. He's a photographer. Yeah, but. I am the opposite. I'm just like, I have no interest in Hollywood at all. Like, the people... The more higher up a person is, the more higher... The more important a person is, and the more authority they have, and the more... The less I respect them, the less I trust them. You know what I mean? It's just the way I am. I just like, look at them, and I say, yeah, well, what skeletons do you have in your closet? <laughs> What's, tell me about the skeletons you have in your closet. Yeah, tell me about it, you know? Oh, you know, I can look at it on here. Photography. Oh, I'm so stupid. I didn't know I didn't see that. Oh, he has Instagram. This is him. 
And oh, he took a picture of him. Oh, that's nice. How even Dell? I think this is his boyfriend. Yeah, I think that's his boyfriend. This guy, you know, he's in Hollywood, right? <laughs> she's doing yoga pose. She's doing she's doing a yoga pose. This guy is um Modi. He's like a comedian. That's my sister. I'm really close with her. She has like four kids. Oh my god. Set for photography, Red Bull film. I always love being on set, and it's even better when there's such a great people you're working with. Oh boy. Is this a set? Oh yeah, they're on set. They're not real nuns. <laughs> and then you have, you know... It's funny because, like, you take pictures of, like, women immodestly, right? And... And people get offended. Why are you taking pictures like this? Like they would unfollow him and stuff. And he's just like, he doesn't see, he doesn't understand. Like, I think he doesn't see like, he's very simple. Like he doesn't see like, oh, this is inappropriate. He'll just be like, okay, I'm taking a picture, you know. And who's this? Okay. Who's this pretty woman? I don't know who that is. <laughs> this is my niece, actually. This little girl's my niece. She's Fliga. She's my niece. That's not my niece. Not my niece. See, like, he takes pictures of women, and he's gay, but... He takes pictures of women. It's not like he thinks of them like when they're... He's taking pictures of them like in a sexual light. You know what I mean? Like it's... It doesn't even come to his mind. This is my nephew. I'm so old. Oh, this is my father. Yeah, my father. I don't know who that is. That's my cousin. She, she's actually an interior designer. She's really good. And that's my sister. He took these pictures when he was like six years old of my sister at her wedding. Six years old? Ten years old? How old was he? Nine years old, maybe? My sister, yeah. He took these pictures of her. <laughs> he loves photography at a young age. I don't know who that is. I don't know who these people are. And I don't care. But the main thing is, he does nice photos, you know? And... Oh yeah, D'Amelio family, Charlie D'Amelio. Here's my nephew. This is my nephew. <laughs> so cute. Oh, that is... Her name is Flatbush Girl. Yeah, oh, he, he's really good. I'm very proud of him. And... You know who this guy is. I don't know who he is. Oh, this is my other sister. I buried the closet in the swamp. Yeah, this is my other sister. My little sister, Rifka. Uh, oh yeah, that's her again. That's my little sister. My baby sister, Rifka. That is God Elbaz. He's like an Israeli singer. Um, let's see what else there is. That's my baby brother. That's him, the photographer. Very sweet. On the rooftop of our building. <laughs> this is the roof of our building where we grew up. That's him, so sweet. I love him. He's so sweet. He's the baby. Um, yeah. Let's see what else there is. Oh yeah, that's my sister again. Wait, not this one. This one. That's my sister. My younger sister. She's younger than me, two and a half years.
that's her again, my little sister. She looks like a dolphin, <laughs> my little sister. This is my nephew. I have this actually on my phone. This this particular picture I have on my phone. You see, this is... I don't know if you can see. This is... I have my niece on my phone. Every time I open it, I see this beautiful baby. And then I go and... I don't know if you can see. I have the same picture on my phone that he took. It's amazing. He's really good, my baby brother. And... Wait, what's, what else does he have? This is my sister again. My sister does face paint. So she did face paint on my sister. My other sister does face paint, so she did face paint on her. <laughs> and... Wow. Gosh, I could get, like, banned for this picture. <laughs> it's supposed to be for the... It's not supposed to be blackface. It's supposed to be for the Passover, right? There is a, there is a, a plague. There were ten plagues. So there was the plague of blood, the plague of frogs, the plague of locusts, the plague of the dead animals, the plague of, plague of boils, the plague of all this stuff. And one of the plagues was the plague of darkness, you know? Um, and so the, he, she painted her face black for the darkness. Is that her? She's wearing a wig. Very good, not bad. <laughs> And it actually got printed in the Jerusalem Post for the Ten Plagues of Passover. She sent pictures in. Yes. That's her again. My little sister, Rifka. My sis this is my other sister. Um, she's my best friend in the whole entire world. She's my best friend. I don't know what I would do without her. That's my baby brother, Zish, when he was younger. My cousin. My neighbor, <laughs> my sister's friend. Who's this? I don't know who that is. I don't know who this is. Not, not a golden. My father always says <laughs> when he sees people. My father always says <laughs> my last name is Golden, right? So when we see people, why is it? Oh, he did it on purpose. When we see people, what's this? Oh, it's my other baby brother. <laughs> When he see, my father sees somebody, you know, like a neighbor, he would say to them, not a golden, you're not one of us. <laughs> Probably it must be fun with her, yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back and see, see, this is my baby brother. He's so sweet. He's such a sweetie pie, I love him. My baby brother. He has a LinkedIn. He has LinkedIn. If you guys want photos, you can just book him. And let's see. Does he have a YouTube channel? Uh, is this a golden? What's this? Uh, let's see what else there is. Pinterest. He's on Pinterest. Follow him. Okay, let's see. He's a current Heights celebrity. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, on Twitter, my baby brother. <sighs> this is him. Let's see him. My baby brother, so cute. Photos which modeling agencies require. The four standard types of photos which modeling agencies require. <laughs> the four 
stereotype that's his boyfriend that's my my brother's boyfriend <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> you know, it's funny. He makes me laugh. He makes me laugh, my baby brother. Whenever I'm with him, he's such a sweetie pie. And you know, his name is Zusha, which means in Yiddish, sweet. He's a sweetie pie. Riley Coog, I don't know who that is. I don't, oh. You know who she is? Wait, she's like the lady that, who is she? Who is she, this lady? I know this lady, I can't remember where she's from. Which movie she played in. What was her name? Rose McClever, source? McClever? Oh, she played in, in Leap Year, I think. Yeah. Three simple poses that anyone can do. Yeah, let's see. Adam Scott, he took a picture of this guy. Yes, you get the picture, right? Uh. Yeah, so he does podcasts sometimes. He Let's see on Vimeo what this is all about. Oh. He's so smart, you know? <laughs> He's so smart, my baby brother. So cute and so smart. Gosh, I love him. He's my baby. Hey, let's see this. And then do not be afraid to charge. I, I, I have to repeat that. You cannot. You have, you cannot be afraid to charge, you have to. What is it? Monica from Friends, Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Stiller, and I know you have so many more. Can you give a brief intro of yourself? Yes. Hi guys, my name is Yusha Golden. I am a headshot and portrait photographer based in Los Angeles, California. I'm the youngest of 10. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. I moved out here two years ago right when COVID started. And uh, there's been a lot of blessings recently. Wow, so you take photos, right? Like, what type of photo? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So, I take photos that convey a story. I'm trying to always make each part of the image that you see be pretty in its own right. And uh, the reason why I'm specializing more in portraits and people is because I believe that humans, as humans, we are all kind of the same, but also uniquely different and we all have intrinsic value and so I believe every single person that I photograph has a different story that they can convey in the there I uh, would just drop my website everywhere that I everyone that I met just because like word of mouth marketing yes you get to take care of my baby brother he's so cute uh. okay let's see his Facebook Wow, he's really done, like, networked himself. I'm very impressed. He's so cute. So cute. Adorbs. Uh, he's adorbs. Let's see what else there is. This is, this is his, uh, he also does family portraits, but he, he tries, he want he really specializes in... Celebrity portraits. <laughs> he does weddings. Wow, that's really clear. Right? Whoa. 
Nice pictures. Good job, Zush. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Next is, let's see, wait, let's go back. Okay, where's his website? There it is. Just like his sister, he's an artist. <laughs> yeah, but better. He's an artist, but better. You know what I mean? Do my full portfolio. He's a sweetie pie. He's the best. I'm so proud of him, you know? Like, it's crazy how, like... It's crazy how proud I am of him. You know what I mean? Gold in. Gold in. <laughs> That's my name, Golden. <laughs> Gold in. Such a sweetie pie. I love him! Look at this cutie pie. Okay, next. Oh yeah, so... Here she is, my baby sister. She's she's married with a daughter. She has a daughter now. Baruch Hashem, thank God. She has a child. And I told her, I told her, I said to her when I saw my little sister, I said to her, listen, you're not little. Have all your babies now. <laughs> I said to her, have all your babies now because... Twitter? Oh, he has a Twitter page. I have to follow him. <laughs> I have to follow him. <laughs> He's such a sweet baby. Yes. That's my baby. Okay. Um, what else is there? Okay. Now let's go to... Back to the news. So you get a picture, right? He's a bigger artist. He's, he's special. Okay, so we do sports. I don't care for sports. Business, science. Should we see science? <coughs> Excuse me. Historian race to find Great Lakes shipwrecks before quagga. Mussels destroyed. Mussels? What's mussels? Destroy the sites? Oh my god. Pig hearts are being used as transplants for men. Oh my god. That is insane. Do you hear? Pig hearts are being used for Wait, where are we? Pig hearts are being used for men. Where are we? Hold on. Come on, seriously? I press it and it doesn't go. Okay, so... Surgeons have transplanted a pig's heart into a dying man in a bid to prolong his life. Only the second patient to ever undergo such an experimental feat. Two days later, the man was cracking jokes and able to sit in a chair. The 58-year-old Navy veteran was facing near certain death from heart failure, but other health problems meant he wasn't eligible for a traditional heart's heart transplant. Nobody knows from this point forward, at least now, I have hope and I have a chance. Wow. So it might work. You know, I just keep shaking my head. How am I talking to someone who has a pig heart? Wow. There's a huge shortage of human organs donated for transplant. Last year, there were just over 4,100 heart transplants in the U.S. You know, like, first of all, like, they say, like, the pig is the most dirty animal in the world. If you get a pig heart, you can eat, can't eat bacon without being a cannibal or disturbing. Yeah, I think that's the thing is, like, that's the thing is, like, okay, Jewish people are not allowed to eat pig. It's forbidden. It's, like, the most forbidden food in the world. Why? Because pigs are not kosher. But the thing is, like, 
they say that pigs are their their flesh tastes like a human and they're they're basically like the most dirty animal because they they roll in the dirt and they eat like garbage and so their meat is not really healthy but the thing is you can use a pig's heart for a transplant now so like I feel like people shouldn't be eating pig at all because pig isn't something that is clean or you should have some respect for it also because they're using it for for transplants that actually work the same Maryland team last year performed the world's first transplant of a genetically modified pig heart into another dying man. It was genetically modified. I don't know what that means. Who survived just two months? There's a huge... I don't get it. Like, what, the guy who they put the heart in only survived two months? Like, I don't get it. So... There's a huge shortage of heart transplants. Attempts at animal-to-animal -animal organ transplants have failed for decades. As people's immune systems immediately destroyed the foreign tissue, now scientists are trying to, again, use using pigs genetically modified to make their organs more human-like. Wow, that's wild. Recently, scientists at other hospitals have tested pig kidneys and hearts in donated human bodies, hoping to learn enough to begin forming formal studies of what are called xenotransplants. To make these new attempts in a living patient outside of a, a rigorous trial, the Maryland researchers required special permission from the Food and Drug Administration under a process reserved for certain emergency cases with no other options. Um, they made a first attempt, even though that patient died for reasons that aren't fully, un fully understood, that it made sense to try again. Okay, so what difference, what's different this time? Only after last year's transplant did scientists discover signs of a pig virus lurking on inside the heart, and they now have better tests to look for hidden viruses. They also made some medication changes. Probably most more important, while Fawcett has end-stage heart failure and was out of other options, he wasn't as near death as the prior patient. By Friday, his new heart was functioning well without any supportive machinery, the hospital said. Can you imagine? Roast pork is nice. Wild born, no. I would never eat pig because it's forbidden. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's forbidden. Like, I would never eat pig because it's forbidden. It's just amazing feeling to see, it's just an amazing feeling to see this pig heart work in a human, said Dr. Mohammed Mu Hiyodin, a Maryland's team Senno transplantation expert, but he cautioned, we don't want to predict anything. We will take every day as a victory and move forward. This kind of single patient compassionate call, compassionate use can provide some information about how the pig organ works, but not nearly as much as more formal testing, said Karen Maschek, a research scholar. The pig heart provided by Blacksburg, Virginia based Reviva Kerr has ten genetic modifications, knocking out some pig genes and adding some human ones to make it more acceptable to the human immune system. So it's working, you know? It's an amazing feeling, right? I mean, you know, it's an amazing feeling just to see this, this big hard work in a human and that person talking to you, right? So, so you know, nothing can beat that feeling. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we want this to, uh, you know, work for a longer period of time. Wow. That's insane. He wasn't I, eligible for know, a human I keep, heart. I keep shaking my head. How can I be talking to somebody who has a pig's heart? <laughs> I mean, it's remarkable. It's crazy, right? 
my whole family has been awesome. So I will fight tooth and nail for every breath I can take to stay with all of them longer. It concerns that we are. But realistically, it concerns me that we are messing with nature. <laughs> this is still an early stage learning yeah. process. I know you're joking. And I have to be ready to accept Don't whatever worry, beard, beard. outcome we end up at. It's a great attestation from the FDA also to give us permission for the second one. That that shows us that also you know gives us confidence that what we did the first time and the, the effort to find out what went uh, wrong or you know what we can improve was taken um, uh, you know uh, seriously by the FDA. Insane. That's wild. NASA spacecraft delivers biggest sample yet from an asteroid. Archaeology. The Mexican government says train poses no threat to skeleton. Gator with missing nose and upper jaw finds a new home in Florida Reptile Park. It looks like a small gator. Do you like gators? Well, with a gator looking like this, this gator can't pose any harm to anyone. So sure, I would have this gator in my house because they can't chomp down on anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure, I would have this gator in my house. Who needs... Who doesn't want another pet that's not dangerous, you know? <clears throat> um, Mexican government says train poses no fat. Okay, let's see what else. More news. Workers uncover eight mummies and pre-Inca objects while expanding the gas network in Peru. Cases from Philippine volcanoes sicken dozens of children. Prompting school closures nearby. <coughs> Excuse me. Ancient power. Palazzo on Rome Palatine Hill reopens to tourists decades after closure. Sufjan Stevens is relearning to walk after Julian Barr syndrome left him immobile and hospitalized. What's Julian Barr? Let's see what that is. Copy. Paste. It's a syndrome. Nerve damage. Weakens and tingles in your hand. Wow, that's so scary. Oh boy. Okay, uh, this symbol log structure may be the oldest example of early humans building with wood. After attacks, British Prime Minister says American extra large bully dogs are dangerous and will be banned. What do you think about dogs? Why do they want to ban everything? It concerns me that we're missing that snapping turtles are more dangerous. Let's look up snapping turtles. Snapping turtle. It's a freshwater turtle. They're dangerous. Uh, it's known for its combative disposition when out of the water with its powerful beak like jaws and a highly mobile head and neck. In water, it's likely to flee and hide underneath its sediment. The common snapping turtle has a life history strategy characterized by high and variable mortality in embryos and hatchlings, delayed sexual maturity, 
extended adult longevity and iteroparity, repeated repro reproductive events with low reproductive success per productive reproductive event. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they're given this dangerous type of beak because they're unable to reproduce so like successfully. So let's see. Very dangerous. Let's type in dangerous. Snapping turtles will snap if provoked, but they aren't generally aggressive. In the water, they are usually calm and ducile, and they aren't considered a danger to swimmers. However, they can be a bit more feisty on land. What could they do? Can they bite? While the danger of a common snapper is the damage of a loss of a human finger or toe, Alligator snapping turtles are so much larger than the danger lies in the loss of the entire hand or foot. So there's an alligator, oh my god, there's an alligator snapping turtle. So there's different kinds of snapping turtles. <gasps> oh, can you imagine? Ridiculous! Ah. <gasps> oh. Can you imagine? Lampa, look up Lampedusa. Look up Lampedusa. Okay, let's copy paste from Redbeard. Hold on. Okay. Lampedusa. Lampedusa. Copy. Paste. Paste. Enter. Lampedusa is the largest island of the Italian Pelagate Islands in the Mediterranean Sea. Is there a turtle? Lampedusa turtle. Yurtle the turtle. <laughs> Tur. Lampedusa turtle. This is a turtle group. I don't know if that's, that's what you mean. Okay, let's see that. Did I tell you about this date? I went on dates with this guy from, uh, what do you call it? Now I scroll down to the news. Oh, the news. Oh, okay. Lampedusa turtle nudes. News. Introducing news. To the news. I don't get it. In over 200 years, human activities have tipped the scales against the survival of these ancient mariners. Slaughtered for their eggs and meat, skin shells, seen sea turtles suffer from poaching and ever over exploitation. You know, it's funny because, like, you know, it's funny because I watched uh, a movie, not turtle, oh, just Lampedusa. Okay, <laughs> let's try again. Oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty. Oh, news, he said, Lampedusa news. The crisis we face alone is a humanitarian one. There's asylum seekers, people wanna go there for asylum. Immigrants. <laughs> Thousands of migrants arrive on Italian island? It's an Italian island. Seriously? What the fuck? <laughs> S 
Seriously? Wow. 6,000 locals. 1,500 immigrants. This is criminal. This is criminal. If you're saying that the people is there's only six thousand people on that island and you have the immigrants coming, like this is criminal. How could they do such a thing? What the hell? And these people, you see these these people, they're they're from these other countries, right? Immigrants, migrants. Um, I don't know why the guy in the French, the French people, the the guy who's in charge, like the, the the French minister. I don't understand why he's not thrown out. Macron, he should he should be thrown out. Like you see this guy right here. You see this guy. He has no respect for women from his culture. They just like take what they want from women. They have no, and they, most of them are Islamic, so they have like views on women. You know what I mean? Property. Women are property. They're not human. Even though they came out of a woman's vagina, but yeah, women are not human. I don't get why people are just letting it happen. It's crazy. It's insane. Like, how are these people, like, dealing with this? All men. There's no women. Exactly. Exactly. All men. Like, in every country in America, like in New York, the migrants, men. What happened to, like, women and children? No, it's the men. The men are coming. They're just coming to destroy everything. Everything Western. And my father used to say, Oh, yeah, the reason why the Democrats want all these, like, immigrants to come in because they'll get the immigrants. If the immigrants come in and become, get citizenship, then they can vote, and they will vote Democrats. So Democrats will always be in office. What video? Here in the Medusa, the Christ of the Face alone. Why should the Italian people provide for these blood-sucking vampires? That's all it is, blood-suckers. <laughs> See, like, these people that are, like, pro the immigrants, they should just have them in their, their house. This is what many in Lampedusa want their island to be famous for. Its jaggedly beautiful landscape, its sparkling coves, its seafood, its traditions. Gianluca Cucina despairs that it's known instead for its repeated migration emergencies, causing uncertainty for would-be tourists and the families like his who rely on them. When tourists call, they always ask, what's the latest with migrants? And we're exhausted. We can't work in peace and promote our beautiful island. This isn't the first time that Italy has seen this kind of level of seaborne arrivals, but the difference is the proportion. Back in 2015, 2016, that number was about 8%. This year, the proportion of arrivals arriving into Lampedusa is 70%. Last week's sudden surge in numbers brought demands from Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni for an EU naval mission. Now Meloni is seeking a yet broader international response at the UN General Assembly in New York. Can we really pretend to not see that no other criminal activity in the world today is more lucrative than the trafficking of migrants when it is the UN reports themselves that have shown how this business has reached, by volume of money, the same level of drug trafficking? Back on Lampedusa, Gianluca's mother is cooking in a family restaurant. He and his father run boat trips. He says Meloni is failing, like her predecessors, to address their concerns. They need to tell us the truth. Meloni fooled us with the talk of a naval blockade which never went anywhere. That exploited Lampedusa even more. 
in 24 hours, they throw them back. So see exactly. I agree. The situation is now far less acute, but still hundreds of migrants arrive daily. The reception center all still men. well over capacity. All men, fucking Brian's men. Priest says its people will continue to do what they can to treat them with dignity. Dignity? What is dignified about them coming to leech off of other people? Go back to where you came from. Lampedusa's people are not tired of migrants. In fact, we've seen more cases of emergency and the welcome has remained the same. The people are tired of political power that doesn't take note of the real emergency, guaranteeing dignity to everyone. This guy's wrong. But others here talk of a general shift towards a harder line. At a public meeting on Wednesday, Persistent rumors resurfaced that the government wants to build a repatriation center here, housing people who don't qualify for asylum for up to 18 months. There's no Holocaust in this country. says that would destroy the island and that he would use any means to fight it. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Lampedusa. Wow. Can you imagine? There's no women and children. There's no Holocaust happening in these other countries, in these other African countries. Okay, Sudan, I get it. There's like war but i would reject all the men and take the women and children you know what i mean but this is criminal you have the same kind of fans here yeah it's disgusting it's disgusting and all these like migrant migrant men they have no respect for women they go and they rape women they're criminal it's disgusting it's an outrage i don't understand why the people don't rise up Get their pitchforks, get their guns, whatever they have, and go storm the capital and take down those people that are causing them this trouble. After days at sea, thousands of migrants disembark at Lampedusa's dock. They're told to queue, but many lack the strength. And One we woman. see a man in green scrubs trying to help them. Two women. Sweat stained and frenetic, he treats them all. The children. There are some women and children. Brought to a plastic cabin on the site. Over the course of an hour, seven infants are admitted to this ad hoc A and E. And he thought they'd probably be okay. His name is Franco Galato. A registered nurse and we found him at the island's hospital. Mr. Galato said his experience of war has prepared him for this. I always worked in emergency situations. I've been in Iraq and Afghanistan and I've done these missions abroad. I work on the front line in emergencies because I can handle it. He's treated hundreds of patients over the past week, including this group from Mali in West Africa. There's no Holocaust, that's the thing, you know what I mean? Like days at sea, yeah, days at sea will, will make you die like this, you know what I mean? Why would you put your child on a boat like that? Have no sympathy, yeah. Like, also there's no Holocaust going on there. In Somalia, yeah. Maybe, you know, they're, the Christians, the Muslims are killing the Christians in Somalia, you know, so I understand why they need to escape. But, otherwise, like, I don't have any pity for them either. Like, why are they coming to these places? Like, if there's no Holocaust, why are they coming to these places? No war, just chance, changers, changers, chancers. They're just taking a chance, yeah. Listen. Children are suffering from fever and dehydration, and they'll be transferred to the Italian mainland. They were quite ill. I would not have a children's ward on the island. Really, we are just an emergency room. The island's hospital is dealing with a continuous medical emergency. The staff work day and night. And the local residents? Well, they have to wait. 100 people have just landed at the main dock in the port and they are now bringing the sick and the injured to the local hospital and they are going to be busy over the next landing landing there's another landing what is the purpose of all this the question is what is the purpose what is the purpose what is the end goal right that's what you have to look at what is the end goal what is the purpose why are they doing this why are they coming what is, what what is this all about you know what i mean 
will be busy over the next couple of hours. There must be people here on Lampedusa who, who say to you, look, we don't want them. We don't want these migrants. I say, welcome everyone, because we are all sons of the same God. It's not important that we are white and they are black. We are all God's It's not about color. Someone shouts, Papa. It's Franco's daughter, who's also a nurse. We need you, she says. A newborn baby died earlier this week. His team don't want to lose another. We've watched Mr. Galato work for the past couple of days. A man who could choose to retire if he wanted. But he thinks his service will be required for years to come. John Sparks, Sky News, on Lampedusa. If there's no Holocaust, I don't see why they're coming here. I don't see why they're coming to Italy and France and Belgium and, you know, all these, like, Russia's not accepting these people. It's just the West. It's just uh, America and... Desperate people from North Africa landed on the Lampedusa Island. North Africa. What's happening in North Africa? Right? Smothers are... Is there, like... Are they from Sudan? Because I know in Sudan, there's... Like, they would be legitimate refugees. You know what I'm saying? They're from Tunisia. Tunisia? What's happening in Tunisia? Right? Tunisia. Tunisia. Tunisia, is there a, a Holocaust? Tunisia. What's happening in Tunisia? European says, okay, Tunisia, irregular migration, I don't get it, like, Tunisia, the genocide, is there a genocide in G Tunisia, why are they coming to the U.S. and all these other nations? Okay, so why are why are people why are migrants coming from Tunisia? These migrants are mainly motivated by economic reasons. Around ten thousand migrants are Tunisian rat nationals, which means they that the harsh socio economic situation in Tunisia has not yet sparked an exodus toward Europe. So there's no there's no Holocaust. It's just that they don't have money, you know what I mean? So, yeah, they're coming to all the Western countries. Why are the Somalis in France getting on votes to England? France isn't war. It's ridiculous. There's no Holocaust. There's no reason for, for refugees to come to these countries. They're not, like, okay, I get it. Sudanis, Sudan, like it's Somalis, right? Somalis and Sudan is the same thing, right? Somalis are from Sudan. They're related. Yeah, I get it. You know, the Somalis, I get it. If they're running away because the Muslims are killing the Christians now in Somalia, in Sudan, right? I get it if they're coming, but they're not Somali and they're not Sudanese. These are people are just from, from where? Exactly, like the the state. They need to fix their own problem. There's a huge homeless crisis. You know, like fix your problems within, take care of your own kind, and then think about other people. It's evil to take in other people that don't need help, don't need real help. But then it's it's the people at the top, you know, and 
the the people at the bottom like people like us we need to rally get together and fight against the people at the top but most people are just lazy or not passionate or they don't believe that the people at the top want to destroy their lives you know what i'm saying so sad very sad pathetic actually pathetic you know pissed off I'm actually pissed off now I'm actually legitimately pissed off Justin Bieber used to hit fans. King Charles cheated on Princess Diana. And Sarah Jessica Parker made life hell for co-stars. People in Janine surprised by the blonde ponytail. And smile at me. Lieutenant Dr. S, the medic of the paratrooper reconnaissance unit, says that the fact that there's never been a woman here before just says they've never taken the risk before. During Israel's large-scale counter-terrorist operation in Janine, dubbed Operation Home and Garden, there was only one moment when she was terrified, not a slight unease, but real fear. It happened at a minute before the vehicles began moving towards the West Bank City. <sighs> Lieutenant Dr. S., the medic of the paratrooper reconnaissance unit who went with the fighters into the heart of the battle, calmly recalls the moment she found herself murmuring a prayer. I sat in the ORV off-road vehicle with two paramedics, a medical team within the squad, and I waited to move. I wore a flak jacket and a helmet, and I placed my medic bag on my knees, as you can't hold it on your back while moving. At this point, with nightfall, I already knew we were entering the need in two waves because there weren't enough armored vehicles to bring in all the fighters, and I knew I'd be in the first wave, then suddenly, the ORV door opened. Someone shone a flashlight on me to check that I had my dog tag. Wrote down my name and who was sitting next to whom, and I thought to myself, Wait, this is a record that I'm not too fond of. When they also took my photo, I felt it was an act of, If something happens to you, there will be something to send home. I knew it was a necessary procedure before an operation, yet it was truly distressing. The guys were also stressed. We talked about it on the ride. We were going to return. For sure we'll return. So what's with the, all the drama? Everyone understood the implications of the operation. We were mentally prepared for it. Although I had only assumed my role three weeks before home and garden, we established a line near Janine and entered the city night after night. We knew exactly what was happening in it. We were not naive. As soon as we entered, there were bursts of gunfire and explosions. No one thought they were entering paradise. But once we were inside, I wasn't scared. You're in the middle of the mission. You know what you need to do, what the next step is, and you have to act. After six years of medical studies, as part of pre-military academy program and a year of internship, LT Dr. S. enlisted for a service of four years and eight months. She began her role in May, and by the second week, she already faced her first challenge, a shooting attack with four casualties. I was at the post and wasn't even on alert. On alert, she recounts. By the, by the moment I heard a gunfire, I grabbed the medic bag and went to the commander's vehicle. In the end, I was the first among the senior caregivers to arrive at the scene, and I was just two weeks into the job, right? It was my first real experience. Did they look at you? Amusement. I fell in love with surgery. I don't think women should be in the army at all. I actually think women should not be in the army at all. And they should not be in any part of the army. Maybe they should be doctors and nurses. But nothing more. That's what I believe. <laughs> women should not be in the army. They shouldn't. I don't care women's equality, all this stuff. It's bullshit. Women should not be in the army. Israeli who shot down the Libyan plane, Yiftach Zemmer bring, speaks for the first time about his involvement in one of the most traumatic events. It's funny because it's a distraction for women. 
Let's say it's broken. We are fighting by just saying by just saying it. That will be illegal soon. It's a distraction for men. I agree. Women should not be in the army. There's no place for women in the army, except for being a secretary or and even then, women should not be secretaries because the women get abused usually in the army and and there's no place for like I dated a guy. He's older. He told me that in his time there were no the women. If there were women in the army, there were just secretaries, and they didn't want women in the army because it's just a distraction, and it would make it would make uh, the men would feel responsible if, if something happened to the woman. You know what I mean? That's what he said. I don't think there's no place for women in the army. Why are women in the army at all? Women should not be in the army. They could be in the intelligence. In the army, they could be in other aspects, but they shouldn't be in direct combat. It's bullshit. It's pure bullshit. Royal family sons, Prince Harry on his birthday. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck all of them. Only 25,000 lines left in Africa. That's really sad. Whatever. Put the kettle on. Exactly. You know, like... There are women in the Israeli army, but, like, why are they in the army? What are they doing there? You know? They do good jobs, but it's just not healthy. I don't believe it's healthy. Like, I remember I was in the... In Judea and Samaria, right? I was in the north, near Nablus. And... They were girls in the army, and they were all together. They were, like, doing, you know, part of the army. But, like, I don't think there's any place for women in the army. Women should not be in the army. At all. At all. That's what I think. Maybe I'm being extreme. But, for the most part, women, they, they will just get abused in the army, you know, like. And they have their period. What are they going to do when they have their period? You know what I mean? Being Just being practical. Like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how they do it in the army today, like these women. I don't get it. Chinese people have women in the army. They have a huge woman force, right? They, uh, let the men do the army. Like, why would anyone, like, there are women that, like, I believe in the intelligence. Women can be in the intelligence. They could be secretaries. But everything else, like, what are they doing on force, you know, with running around with guns? I mean, they should have access to guns, but I don't think they should be in the army. That's all. Anyway, it's been lovely. Have a great day. Thanks for being with me. And see you, see you soon next Red Weird. And bye-bye.